Hey all here, OS Reviews. So Logitech has a pretty popular Bluetooth keyboard that is multi-point, and it's known as the K480. In fact, you've probably seen it floating on the internet at some point. One of the in interesting things about this low-cost keyboard is you can connect up to three devices, and it also features a built-in stand for putting up your tablet or phone without having to hold it. And because of this design, you can even put it on your lap and work, which is actually a very great ergonomic design. Today, we're taking a look at Zag's version of that same concept with that stand and a multi-point design. It's called the Limitless Keyboard, and you can actually find this on Amazon right now in new condition for about $15, which is half the price of the Logitech. So if you want to save a bit of cash, we'll find out if this is a version that's uh, worth checking out. One benefit is that this version comes with a rechargeable battery, so you can just plug it in and top it off about once a month. And it also has backlit keys, which are very cool and easier to see in darker environments. And it has seven colors as well that you can customize it with. It works with iOS, with Android, and with Windows tablets. And on the back, you also have some additional info about the viewing angle, as well as how to toggle between up to three devices. So for instance, you can be typing along an essay on a tablet or on a phone, and then switch it to your computer or desktop in the background and just use one keyboard on your desk. Now, because it has this built-in stand, just like the Logitech keyboard, it is a little bit larger and bulkier than a conventional Bluetooth wireless uh, keyboard. The good thing though is it is a full size layout, in fact it's a 12.5 inches diagonally, so it does take up a little bit more space to put into let's say a backpack, but it's not bad, about the same size as an ultrabook I would say. Um, it's a little bit heavier as well just because it needs to really keep the tablet and the phone sitting upright without flopping off. And on the side here there's a tapered edge that features a dedicated power switch and micro USB for charging. Here's the Zag logo, and on the back we have just um, some rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. All right, so the keys themselves are obviously a chiclet island style layout and they feel actually pretty responsive. Uh, compared to the Logitech keyboard, in fact, there's less of a, a pressure that you need to apply on each key. On the Logitech, they felt more plasticky and wobbly as well. But on this one, it definitely feels higher quality as far as these switches are concerned. So immediately, I like that more. The keys themselves also have a matte texture to them, which makes them grippier compared to the Logitech, which is actually just a slick plastic. So there's a lot of benefits that Zag is bringing so the pairing is pretty simple, just tap and hold either 1, 2, or 3 for 3 seconds to enter pairing for that individual mode. So I'm going to try pairing using 1 right now, and it seems like we are now connected to the Zag Limitless. So that was, again, a pretty simple process. So as you can see here, the keys themselves are backlit, but after a few seconds it times out and removes the backlight to conserve on battery. But as long as you actually are kind of uh, tapping along on it, it comes back to life. You can actually change the color in addition to the lighting um, intensity of these keys as well. So for instance, I can tap on function and the icon here, which is the one with the light key to change the different uh, colors. So this goes into a lighter shade of a blue or a more turquoise color. Tapping on again turns green, we have yellow, we have red, there's a purple, and then there's more of a white light before cycling back again. So there are a few, a few different modes that you can cycle from, and the keys themselves can look great in darker environments. You can see them at almost all the angles, it's very consistent and makes typing in the dark a lot easier. And once connected, we can see that the arrow keys also function when it comes to navigating around the tablet. Uh, I don't even have to press on anything. I can try typing out a quick test. So for instance, this is a test of the keyboard. I have to say that the layout, again, is very comfortable. It's very easy to get used to. There's almost no latency or lag either. So as you're typing, everything pops up on screen pretty much in real time, which is always nice. And you can get a very fast and accurate typing speed just within a few minutes of playing with it. Keys themselves not quite as maybe tac tactile or as clicky as a mechanical keyboard if you're used to that, but otherwise it does feel excellent. And now I've paired a second device, you can see that it's actually fitting on the side of the stand here without any problems. Once again, I can interact with the controls using the arrow buttons. I can also tap on things like going back home, opening up search just directly using the uh, command keys on the top row here. If I wanted to now switch back onto my first device, just tap on the one key there, and uh, after a few seconds, you can see that it's now been reconnected. I can now switch onto device two as well and tap on that. And once again, we are reconnected. So there's a slight, maybe one second split delay, but afterwards, the overall speed of switching back and forth is still very much seamless if you've paired it once before. So here's a third phone and I've tucked it onto the side and you can see that it's supporting the weight just fine. And again, the nice thing of having a a, a stand like this, which is more rigid compared to a folio case, which is soft and relies on it 
on a hard surface to stay upright. So you can actually put this uh, and kind of take it with you as well. So as long as it's at this particular angle, you can set it down on your lap and even continue working as opposed to a folio case, which would be kind of just flapping all over the place. And obviously, if you want to just have one device here, you can also lay it horizontally to have a larger screen experience when it comes to watching videos, if you aren't typing necessarily. Again, it makes for an excellent stand that you can just put into uh, your lap, maybe even if you're lying back on a couch or in bed, and it stays in place without you having to hold your device, which is great. Uh, and of course, you can then toggle back and forth between working and watching back videos. It also kind of changes the tilt as well from being more laid back to being more upright depending on what orientation that you try it with. And again, the stand is doing a great job. The soft touch rubber here is really nice and slick so it holds the weight of your devices without it falling loose and provides a pretty nice overall resistance. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Zag Limitless. Overall, I have to say that I like it more than the Logitech Multipoint Bluetooth keyboard, just because it has a rechargeable battery as opposed to taking AAA batteries that you have to change, the fact that it has a backlight, and the fact that I find the keys themselves to be more tactile and have a better sensation that can really improve your typing speed compared to a virtual keyboard. Uh, you still have that excellent design as well as that stand, which I really do like, and I think that for only $15, it's definitely an investment that you should consider if you don't already have a keyboard for your tablet or for your phone, and it certainly is one of the better two-in-one combination products on the market. You can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our hands-on review of the Zag Limitless Multipoint Wireless Bluetooth Keyboard.